As inflation fuels the cost of transportation, a simple commute to work every day can take a big bite out of your wallet. And with more Americans heading into the office now, they're feeling this pinch every time they fill their gas tanks. CNN's Gabe Cohen is joining us now on this story. It does make you wonder if at some point employers are going to have to address this, either by maybe helping foot the bill or saying, you know what, maybe you don't have to come in. And we are starting to see that in some cases. There have been companies that are offering some sort of gas stipend and or pay bump. And now we're also seeing workers who are pushing back about actually returning to the office. The U.S. government is predicting the average household is going to spend hundreds of dollars more on gas this year. For a lot of families, especially lower income families, that could be a big chunk of their annual savings. And some workers have no choice but to eat that cost. It seems twisted that getting to work is financially crushing Liz and Scott Angstad. Their combined commute more than 500 miles each week through New Jersey, with Scott paying $6.19 a gallon for his diesel-powered pickup. Their monthly gas bill has nearly doubled in a year, now over $1,000. We cut back in our groceries and what we eat. We cut back more than half of what we're going to travel this summer. We wouldn't think that we would be talking about money every single day. While this couple's commute is longer than most, as more workers get called back to the office, millions are feeling this squeeze. With the national average gas price more than $4.60 a gallon, at some California stations, the price is higher than the federal minimum wage. It's already bad. It could get worse, and it's definitely not going to get much better. The average U.S. commute now costs an extra $35 a month compared to pre-COVID far more in cities like L.A., San Francisco, Chicago, and New York. I'm not able to work from home. Spencer Jewell says he's paying an extra 50 bucks a month to get to work in Greensboro, North Carolina. When is it going to come to an end? I can't work. In Atlanta, Kirsten Ashley says gas is too pricey for her to take a job. It's not worth it almost because I'm getting paid maybe $10, $12 an hour. An international survey conducted last November found 64% of workers would consider looking for a new job if forced to return full time. In Washington state, more than 100 contracted Google Maps workers signed a petition refusing to return to the office. It's a huge additional expense. Tyler Brown would have to drive 74 miles each way. It doesn't make sense for me at the moment for $19 an hour, so I'm going to have to look for a different job. Workers are looking at it from a standpoint of, can I afford to take that new opportunity or can I afford to stay if required to go back to the office? But some don't have easy options. It's very frustrating, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Scott Angstad is eight years from his pension as a railroad engineer. To throw that away, I mean, that's throwing away a lot. So there's no plan to change direction, even as they pump the brakes on long-term plans. That picture has kind of altered. We might not be retiring in eight years.